So far, we discussed uh, microstrip, uh, we discussed actually rectangular uh, patch or a circular patch or a, in a both two models. But uh, in both, in all models that we have discussed so far, the polarization of the microstrip antenna is linear. However, with a microstrip antenna, we can obtain also circular polarization. How this can be done? In order to obtain circular polarization, we need two orthogonal to excite in the cavity domain of the patch, two orthogonal modes with equal amplitudes, and they should be excited with a 90 degrees time phase difference. This can be accomplished, for instance, by adjusting the physical dimensions of the microstrip patch or by the various feed arrangements, as we can see here. Like, for instance, if we take a patch antenna uh, which uh, is square and we feed two adjacent edges by a 90 degrees phase difference or lambda over uh, 4 uh, in terms of uh, transmission line delay, we obtain excitation of two orthogonal modes, which are 90 degrees uh, phase difference, and therefore we obtain here radiation of circular polarization. Another way to obtain the same effect is by actually feeding the microstrip antenna at one of its corners, and uh, uh, by slightly um, by changing one of the dimensions of the patch, and obtaining again excitation of two uh, orthogonal modes, but with 90 degrees phase difference. The same effect can be obtained if we also cut a slot, a oblique slot in the patch. And uh, we can obtain here also excitation of two orthogonal modes with a 90 degrees phase difference. Another way to obtain the two excited modes with 90 degrees phase difference is by trimming the corners of the patch. And uh, finally, if we have, uh, for instance, a circular patch antenna, we can use a hybrid, which is a power divider with 90 degrees phase difference, which excites two points separated by 90 degrees inside the cavity domain, and again we excite uh, two orthogonal modes, and uh, uh, the hybrid actually contributes the 90 degrees phase difference, and in this way actually you obtain a circular polarization. So far we have seen various ways of obtaining circular polarization by using passive uh, uh, feeding uh, lines. But uh, we can obtain a, a more sophisticated uh, microstrip, antennas, uh, microstrip antennas using, for instance, a ferrite disk. Well, uh, and the, this ferrite disk is actually inserted in the cavity domain of the patch, uh, which uh, in this case is circular, and the feeding is uh, electromagnetically uh, coupled uh, strip, which excites uh, the cavity domain, and on top, of this uh, feeding uh, strip, we locate a very tiny uh, disc, ferrite disc. Now, what is interesting in the ferrite disc that uh, the ferrite disc has some anisotropic um, feature, and accordingly, it uh, the field uh, it actually imposes rotation of the electric fields inside the cavity domain such that at one frequency the field is rotated, let's say, counterclockwise, and in another frequency you obtain field that is rotated uh, clockwise. Therefore, by just varying the frequency uh, of operation of the patch, we obtain actually uh, two types of circular polarization, right hand or uh, left hand. We can see uh, this uh, translated into the reflection coefficient by in this plot, in which uh, is plotted the reflection coefficient versus the frequency. At two frequencies, we obtain left-hand circular polarization and right-hand circular polarization. And in the gain, in which at uh, the low frequency, you obtain the left-hand circular polarization, maximum gain, and for the uh, right hand, we obtain uh, the right hand circular polarization maximum radiation. Now let's talk uh, 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 for a little while on uh, 
ways to extend the frequency bandwidth of the uh, microchip antenna. As I mentioned before, one of the limitations of the microchip antenna is it's uh, actually limited the frequency bandwidth. And uh, a, a very interesting and uh, a very interesting and promising way to extend the uh, uh, frequency bandwidth of the antenna is to take, for instance, a standard uh, microstrip antenna, uh, which we see here. Uh, in this case, we are talking about a microstrip aperture coupled uh, microstrip antenna and fragment uh, the, uh, the conductive patch. Uh, uh, on, um, on top of the antenna in, uh, or subdivide it into many pixels. Now, those pixels can be actually turned on and off by, in a computer simulation and uh, we can, this entire uh, structure can be analyzed by an optimization algorithm like a genetic algorithm or PSO algorithm in order to obtain maximum bandwidth. And this is done by actually uh, using this uh, optimization algorithm in which we either turn on or off pixels on the patch. And finally, with the objective or the design goal to increase the bandwidth as much as possible. Now, what happens here is actually that we are not talking anymore about one resonant uh, cavity domain, but of very, of many uh, resonant domain of each pixel. And all those resonant domains are actually coupled here. And because we have so many tiny resonant cavities and they are coupled, we are able actually to increase the bandwidth of the device uh, up to 70-80% as we can see here, okay? Uh, so this is in terms of wideband uh, extension. Another important issue of microstream antennas is actually miniaturization. Miniaturization can be obtained actually by using, for instance, fractal geometry. Like, uh, fractal geometry is actually a way to, uh, it's a family of function that uh, uh, evolves with the order of the fractal. So, for instance, if we start with uh, the basic shape, like a triangular, we obtain a one frequency, a resonant frequency. As we increase uh, the order of the fractal to, let's say, David star, like uh, it's seen here, we obtain uh, another resonant frequency. And if we go further with this type of uh, fractal order, we obtain another frequency. So how those uh, shapes are related to the resonant frequency? It turns out that the frequency, the resonant frequency of the patch is proportional to the total length of the edges. So, if, the, if we count the total uh, length of the edges in uh, this case, compared to this case, we obtain here a longer antenna, even though the area of the antenna is smaller. So what we obtain here actually is a lower uh, fre resonant frequency with a lower uh, area, and this is actually the essence of miniaturization. We can see here in this plot the reflection coefficient as a function of frequency for those three types of antennas. The green one is actually uh, the re uh, resonance or uh, the uh, reflection coefficient of the triangular. As we go to this design or to this design, actually the reflection coefficient moves to the left and we obtain actually a lower uh, resonant frequencies and we obtain miniaturization. So this is actually, we can see here, an extension to the standard or the classical uh, microstrip or patch antenna, which was uh, rectangular. Now let's talk for a short while on uh, how we actually obtain microstrip antenna arrays. Microstrip antenna arrays are very important, first of all, to increase the uh, directivity and gain, and also to control the, control the radiation pattern of an antenna. If, we, uh, if our objective is actually to obtain uh, either a control side lobe level of the radiation pattern or increase the gain, the way to go is to uh, assemble many 
uh, elements, many pitch, small pitch antennas, into an assembly which gives us an antenna array. Now, there are many ways uh, to feed those type of uh, those uh, patches. Uh, the first one is the parallel feeding, in which actually we actually feed all the uh, patches in parallel. In this case, this is a binary parallel feeding because actually we uh, combine two patches, two and two, and uh, we obtain a feeding point for the, this quarter and so on. It goes to eight and then to the entire array and the feeding point is uh, in the center of the array. Uh, we should be aware that all the lenses up to any of those patches should be equal in order to obtain full uh, uh, combination of the radiation pattern on an axis which is normal to the patch uh, to the microstrip antenna array. The uh, advantage, the great advantage of this uh, parallel feeding is the fact that since the, all the uh, lenses are the same, they are not dependent on frequency and therefore uh, the maximum of the antenna array remains stable in space. This is not the uh, case if we are talking about a serial feeding. What we see here is actually a combined serial and parallel feeding in which uh, this is an antenna array actually that um, operates in two polarization, one here and the other here. But uh, what's interesting to note here, that the patches here on uh, every row, for instance, are connected in serial or they are concatenated. And uh, the rows are actually connected by parallel feeding as we have noticed here. Now, what is uh, the advantage of serial feeding is, of course, uh, the fact is uh, very simple. The topology is very simple. The uh, significant drawbacks of, uh, in, uh, there are in cases there is drawback, in other cases it can be advantage, is the fact that uh, the maximum of the radiation pattern of a serial feeding array is moving with frequency. Now, there are applications that this is uh, one way to scan the uh, radiation pattern. But in uh, some other application, it is a drawback. Now, in both, in both uh, two types of feeding, actually, you obtain a standing wave, actually, from the uh, feed point observation. We have here uh, waves that are going forward and backward. And therefore, there is no problem of that in, uh, obtain, uh, if it is uh, uh, properly designed to obtain a radiation uh, pattern maximum on a normal to the uh, uh, plane of the, uh, of the microstrip antenna array. However, uh, we can uh, find uh, application, and uh, this is also published in the literature, when we are using serial uh, feeding in order to obtain, a uh, to obtain a traveling wave feeding. As we can see here, actually here the elements are connected on a transmission line here and at the end of each transmission line there is a load instead of being open circuit or short circuit. All those lines are actually connected in parallel and this is the main feeding point. What uh, we obtain uh, by this kind of feeding structure is an antenna. Uh, we, uh, with only traveling waves, no uh, a backward wave, and uh, the radiation, uh, ma the maximum of the radiation is basically uh, proportional to the phase difference between the elements along the transmission line. 